So you join us now for the first of our two groups this evening in the big ring to be followed, of course, by Best in Show here at Crofts 2017. The first of our groups is going to be the working group. And here comes our judge. And here we have a lap of honor, first of all, from the imported register winner. These are breeds that are still being established in the UK. They haven't got sufficient numbers or a big enough gene pool yet to have breed classes. And here they come, the first of them, the heavyweight sled dog, the Alaskan Malamute. The Bernese Mountain Dog. Please welcome the Bouvier de Flandre. The Bouvier de Flandre. A little bit of misdirection there. <laughs> and the boxer. They're good for tracking this here as well. <laughs> and here's the boxer. Next that one's on track. Ring, the Bull Mastiff. Um, the beautiful Bull Mastiff. And the Canadian Eskimo Dog. Yeah, a rarer breed, the Canadian Eskimo Dog. Now we see the Doberman. Big round of applause for the Doberman. Followed by the Dog de Bordeaux. Here the Dog de Bordeaux. Very popular in the show this ring. This is the German Pinscher. The German Pincher. Followed by the Giant Schnauzer. Here comes the Giant Schnauzer. Welcome the Great Dane. And here we have the Great Dane. And now we see the Great Swiss Mountain Dog. And he's followed by the Great Swiss Mountain Dog. Yet again, as you see, the tr a tricolour. Greenland Dog. The Greenland dog coming in next, another of the sled dogs. Next in the ring is the Hoverbart. And the Hoverbart. This one, a black and tan. Now we welcome the Leonberger. Another German breed, the Leonberger. Very handsome. The Mastiff. And the Mastiff. Power and substance there. We now welcome the Neapolitan Mastiff. And <laughs> Neapolitan Mastiff. You talked about power and substance? Here and we an are. And an apron for yes. the slobber. <laughs> Next into the ring is the Newfoundland. Big cheers for the Newfoundland. Always a popular breed at Gruffs. Please welcome the Portuguese Water Dog. And the Portuguese Water Dog. Char characteristic clip, this breed. Now we see the Rottweiler. Big cheers now for the Rottweiler. Next dog is the St. Bernard. It's not a St. Bernard, it's <laughs> no, a Russian is... Black Terrier. Very yes. impressive breed. Apologies, here's the St. Bernard. And here comes the St. Bernard. The next dog is the Siberian Husky. There's the Siberian Husky. Swift on its toes. And the last dog into the ring is the Tibetan Mastiff. And bringing up the rear, the Tibetan Mastiff. And a very impressive one, too. So Meg Purnell Carpenter going to take a look at her best of breed winners. Seeing them run in is the first time she's had a chance to clap eyes on them. Now she's taking in those outlines in a little bit more detail. The crisp square outline of the Doberman. There's the very happy pincher. 
massive Great Dane. Canadian Eskimo dog, and there's a very nice looking Leon Burger there. Moving down to the Mastiffs, the Neapolitan, then the Newfoundland. This is where she'll be taking the general outline and balance um, of the breeds before she gets a closer examination with her hands on it, examination of their anatomy. The Alaskan Malamute is the first to be gone over by our judge this evening. A really big dog, up to 56 kilos and originally used by Inuit tribes for freight hauling. Developed further in the USA into the show dog that we see today. A heavy built spitz, compact but massive all through. Now these are dogs bred for pulling heavy weight, so they're not fast, they're strong, and they can, they can pull their own body weight over long distances. Their power is in those hind quarters and those strong shoulders. And that weatherproof duvet of a coat, very important for animals that have to work in sub-zero temperatures more or less all year round. They're equipped to be fit for function, furred inside the ears to protect them against the cold a waving plume of a tail, a breed feature. And this is carrying its tail absolutely perfectly. And of course, they've got to be economical movers, haven't they, Frank, if they're gonna do a decent job of work? Absolutely. So. Now, going over the Bernese mountain dog, this one is one of the larger of the Swiss breeds. It's tricolor, and it was used originally as a carting dog. It was once known as the cheese factory dog because it used to pull the carts from the cheese factories loaded to the stations for delivery. Multitasking though, quite happily the Bernese Mountain Dog, all-purpose cattle herd as well as being a cart hauler and a real people dog. They have the most wonderful temperaments, don't they, Frank? Absolutely. I've seen uh, parades of these at festivals in Switzerland where they, they pull decorated carts through the streets with their owners in national dress. It's a wonderful sight. They're very popular in their native Switzerland. Soft, silky coat, that strong head with a flat-topped skull. And this one from a famous kennel who's won the group at Crufts in, in previous years. This is the Bouvier des Flandres, originally developed in Belgium and France, as his name translates as the Flanders Ox Herd, a really rugged, rustic-looking dog with a massive head accentuated by a beard and the most fantastic tash. Compact and deep bodied, square is what we're looking for here, shorter backed. Now, this one is, has a really much thick coat, very dense and protective. The word boo means cattle, and a bouvier is a cattle dog, and that tells you the original job. But they're so versatile in tracking, working for the armed forces and for the police. Wonderful breed. And apparently, if you go back a hundred years, that coat was flatter and harsher, but today it needs to be abundant, certainly for the show ring. Still dry and coarse to the touch, though. And there, the wonderful head of the boxer. Now, this has come from a very big entry today. The boxer is another German breed. Uh, it's thought that they, were, they, they are a bull breed, which means they've got their bulldog in its ancestry. And it was developed as a guard dog and as a tracking dog, and uh, now very versatile and popular as a... You can see that stride, economic, full of stamina and spirit and strong will, the boxer. As Frank said, very popular pet dogs because they've got such delightful characters. But they're also highly intelligent and appreciate a job of work to do. They're very good at obedience. And if you read the breed standard, that magnificent head takes up a sizable chunk of it. It's a very important feature of the breed. 
This one is a very famous bitch. She's been winning for the since she was a young bitch, a famous champion. This is a bull mastiff, and they were originally developed from a combination of the bulldog and the old English mastiff, used as a gamekeeper's guard. You can imagine, you wouldn't want to mess with the person's pheasants who owned a dog like this that was going to be stalking around at night. All power, but nonetheless fit, agile, and certainly ready to take on anything. Yes, this one is a fawn with a black mask, and which is the more popular colour, but originally, when they when the um, when they were used for working at night against poachers, they they preferred the brindle dogs because they were camouflaged and could give the poachers a nasty shot from the dark. <laughs> and if you run a tape measure around that bull mastiff's head, it'll be the same as its height at the withers. They have real substance. It's substance, but they also have to be athletic, able to jump a five-barred gate. It says, so, but a wonderful breed and great characters. The bull mastiff. Now, the, the Canadian Eskimo dog. Now, this is something of a rare breed and a breed under threat. Um, of course, it's a sled dog, and in Canada, it, it was very popular until the appearance of the Siberian Huskies, which were faster and more popular. Um, however, the Canadian government and the Canadian Kennel Club have got a, a rejuvenation program for them. And Aslan's owner describes him as a fun-loving big ginger boy. <laughs> he certainly seems to be enjoying his chance to, to march on the big carpet here in the group ring at Crufts. Thick, dense coat, shoulder mane bigger in the males, all colours and markings. And again, very hardy. They have to live outside. They're pr quite primitive. They can live and ex survive the extremes of climate. Furred inside the ears and that tail which they can wrap around them when they go to sleep. Such a versatile breed, the Doberman. Many working disciplines, elegant and proud, intelligent and tough. Developed originally from the German Shepherd Dog and the German Pincher by Louis Doberman, a tax collector who needed a minder, and he certainly developed a good one. This is a very elegant breed with a crisp, square outline. Very big entry today. Very smart, handsome dog. Very versatile, working for the armed forces, working for the police, and great tracking dogs. And a bit of very good handling there to, to turn a pogo into a good piece of movement. Square in profile, sloping top line from the withers towards the tail. Still full of joie de vie, this one. Deep ribs with a slight tuck up underneath. This one are black and tan, but they also come in brown and tan, or rust coloured. Now the very strong head and typical expression of the Dog de Bordeaux, or usually known as the French Mastiff, going back its thought to the 15th century. And however, the breed almost fell out of popularity in France and in the French Revolution many of them were slaughtered with their aristocratic owners which was a great pity they have a very distinctive head carriage you'll see when they're moving they drop their head low and this one illustrating that perfectly slight rise to the top line which is quite correct for the breed of course, they became very popular and over-commercialized in the 1960s, but now they're much sounder. The breeders have worked much harder to make them healthier dogs. And this one showing lovely substance and very strong movement and very typical in its carriage. Nice. This is a German pincher. They're the middle-sized member of the pincher family, fit between the Minpin and the Doberman. That blunt wedge of a head, little V-shaped ears folded close, elegant, strong neck, and a compact body with a slightly sloping top line. That coat is short and dense, smooth and glossy. 
Yes, this is the standard size of the pincher. We see the miniature pincher in the toy group, and it's believed that this dog is the base route for the Doberman, which we saw earlier. It always surprises me that these have not become more popular. They're very handy size, no grooming, 17 to, 17 to 19 inches, so they're very handy in the house. Originally bred as vermin dogs to keep down vermin, the word pincher means ripper or seizer, so it would seize the rat and kill it. The German pincher. Now here is the impressive giant schnauzer. Again, another German breed, this wire-coated, square and sturdy. It proved its worth in many disciplines. Obedience, tracking, working for the armed forces, and in the trenches in the war. These have a long head carried proudly on a beautifully arched neck, deep chested, sloping top line, and always powerful from the rear. What makes them very handsome is this crisp wire coat with a dense undercoat, furnishes it with a beard and eyebrows, and should be hard leg furnishings, should be wiry, not soft in the coat. And another whose brains are valued, they're used in so many different working disciplines, particularly in Europe. Originally a very highly prized boar hunter, the Great Dane, it combines size with tremendous elegance. That long head has powerful jaws carried on an arched neck. Massive bone, straight in front, we need a nice deep chest there. The, the title is misleading, it's called Great Dane, but it's really developed in Germany. And as you say, Jesse, it was a boar hunting hound. And there are some people who think it should be in the hound group, because it's still got this natural instinct to go hunting. And also, despite the size, what we see with the Great Dane is a lithe, almost springy gait that belies the hunter, doesn't it? And they should have a, they should have a look of dash and dare, the standard ask for dash and dare, a readiness to go everywhere. There's an elegance with substance. This one, lovely head carriage here going round, very composed in the big ring. But if you're considering a Great Dane, then you really have to think about upsizing the sofa. Yes, and having a few sponges and cloths for the slobber, as you say, <laughs> Jessica, when they shake themselves. But they're a lovely breed to live with. Gentle giants, the Apollo of dogs, we call them. And here is the tallest of the Swiss dogs, the Great Swiss Mountain Dog. Again, it's thought that the, the white markings on the chest of the Swiss breeds is to represent the white cross on the flag of Switzerland. But perhaps there's a little bit of canine Im imagination there. This is Festus, come all the way from Moscow in Russia to compete here at Crufts. The same tricolour markings as a Bernese mountain dog, but short, dense, weatherproof coat instead. And another one who's really multi-purpose, not only a draft and carting dog, but also one that will herd your cattle or your sheep for you. Absolutely, and this one, a big winner, it is actually the world winner from the World Show last year. So uh, very successful and a, a good day at Crafts for it too. This is definitely not a dog for the faint-hearted. You'll never, ever wear him out. <laughs> he needs a very firm pack leader. It's the Greenland dog. Typical spits in make and shape with a thick double coat, impenetrable to any weather, and any color or combination of colors is allowed. That wedge-shaped head and the tail curled over the back. This is the only surviving native breed of Greenland and it's been kept very pure because it survived an epidemic and then they allowed no imported dogs into Greenland. So the gene pool is very pure, but also quite limited. You don't see many numbers of this breed. And there's quite a difference between dogs and bitches in the Greenland dog. This is a dog, more massive, heavier boned and taller. The bitches you'd expect to be smaller and slightly more feminine, but nonetheless able to do the job of work for which they were bred. And although very loyal to their owners, got a strong sense of hierarchy working in a pack. Here we see a male, number one, seven, seven, five, 
And here is the Hoverwart, another German breed. The word Hov means farmstead in Germany, or Hof, and Wart is the, the guard dog. So it was the dog of the farm. And it's an all-purpose farm dog. It could herd the, herd the animals, be a cart dog, and do general guard duties. This one is a black and gold. We'll also see them in solid black and blonde. Very unexaggerated breed, all purpose, very affectionate and unexaggerated in their conformation. This one looks relatively young, it looks uh, not quite finished in the body yet. A very nice head, clean and wedge shaped, and this glossy, silky coat, strong legs and feet. Nice effortless ground covering stride there. Marvellous shot of the head of the Leonberger, created by Heinrich Essig in the 1840s by crossing St Bernard's with Newfoundlands to create a massive dog but with a wonderful temperament. Their regard almost died out in the 20th century, down to literally just a handful, but have been revived by dedicated breeders since. If, if you go to the town of Leonberg, which is in southwestern Germany, you can see the profile of the Leonberger on the town's flag and, and crest. They are lion-like in their colouring, uh, gold, uh, rich cream, and often with a black mask which extends just a little bit beyond the eyes. This one is a particularly impressive one. He's Beautiful. got substance, but also very agile. And one of the challenges in, in breeding these big dogs is to keep them sound and mobile. And this one going beautifully. Very impressed with this one. See the black mask there just going up the muzzle and above the eyes. And those pounding feet. And our judge now looking at the Mastiff, sometimes referred to as the Old English Mastiff. And this one is a brindle, that colour which was the camouflage for working at night against the poachers. And this is what it was bred to do. Rather like the Bull Mastiff, it was to ward off poachers and the gamekeepers liked them. And this is a truly massive dog. There's actually no upper limit for either his weight or his size. So as big as you like, square head from every angle. And a rather truncated muscle. But it's all right having the substance. It's important that they're also agile and sound. The Mastiff is much bigger than the Bull Mastiff. It's longer in the body and deeper in the girth. Look at the power in that dog's shoulders and chest. And probably one of our oldest recognised breeds dating back to Saxon times. This one is top winner in the country last year. So. Now, along similar lines and with similar duties, this is the Neapolitan Mastiff, developed in Italy, of course, from the Roman Molossus, which was a fighting dog, and the Neapolitan Mastiff was a dog to be found fighting for survival in the gladiatorial arena himself, characterised by a degree of loose-fitting skin and that gorgeous colour. This breed goes back to uh, ancient Russian times, and it's thought ancient uh, Roman times, it's thought that this led the, um, the armies into battle, often with a, a spiked collar around its neck. That would strike fear in the, into, into the, uh, the enemy, I'm sure. They are a breed which has suffered from exaggeration in the past. The breed is working now to reduce the wrinkles, to reduce the loose skin. And this one is moderate in those respects. It's always a balancing act, isn't it? You want the characteristics of the breed and that loose skin is so important, but not so much that it actually impedes the dog's function or affects its welfare. This is a good one. And now the very popular breed, the Newfoundland, come from a big entry of over 200 dogs today. The Newfoundland was a, bred as a water dog and a water rescue dog, and it's built to do just that. It's big barrel ribs to give it buoyancy in the water, an oily coat to give it some waterproof qualities, and... 
And that coat comes in various colours. This one a black, but also in brown or landseer, which is black and white. And when we see them go, they should have a slightly rolling gait, but nonetheless lovely free movement for such a big bone dog. This one from the famous Merry Bear Kennel, and he is a, a well-known champion, winner of nine challenge certificates last year, so top winner in the breed. They have a bit of nobility about them, don't they, Newfoundlands? There's a picture of a Portuguese water dog labelled as a water spaniel in Topsell's famous tome, A History of Four-Footed Beasties, published in 1607. As we see them in the show ring today, they really don't look that much different. Always in this characterised clip with a longer coat on the front of the body and shaved towards the back. Plume on the tail. They're in the working group because they were a water dog who used to help um, fishermen bring in the nets and, and pull in the boats. They're highly versatile. And that mane of hair and the clipped hind quarters is functional. The mane of hair gives them buoyancy in the water and the clipped hind quarters gives them propulsive power so they're not um, cluttered up by too much hair on the hindquarters. And the tail carried in that characteristic ring at the end there. And carried over the loin. That's very typical in its carriage. This one an import from America. Now the Rottweiler. This is another German breed. It was a tax collector's dog and a drover's dog. It was used for driving cattle to markets. And it's thought that they hailed back to Roman times. And the Roman army, going through Europe, left dogs in the cities they'd been. And in, in Germany, which was a drover's centre for cattle markets, they left a lot there. Yasmin's a seven-year-old bitch from a very important Rottweiler kennel, so she's come from the veteran classes, showing that these dogs can endure as well. Characteristic black and tan markings of the Rottweiler. Beautiful. The magnificent Russian Black Terrier. Developed as a military dog originally, incorporating giant schnauzer, which is easy to see, but also the Airedale and the Rottweiler we've just seen to produce a massive dog, 70 centimetres high, 70 kilos in weight. In a relatively modern breed, developed around the time of the First World War and developed in a breeding centre when the Russians wanted to develop a guard dog and a working dog. So Fantastic ground-covering motion being demonstrated beautifully there. This one has come from Hungary to win today. A big winner. Now the Saint, the Saint Bernard is being examined by our judge. And this again is a breed which was known in the Swiss pass and was thought to be a rescue dog. The monks of the uh, hospice there had a, developed the breed to go out in the difficult conditions and snow drifts to rescue lost voyagers. And the St. Bernard has a truly massive head, almost twice as long around as it is in length, carried on a long muscular neck, of course, it would have to be. Plenty of dewlap hanging underneath, and of course those big slobbery jowls as well. And this one is interesting because this coloration is, is a lot more white than we usually see. This is what we call continental markings, where we have, in this country, we have a more red and brown in the coat. This one has a lot of white, the continental coloring. Swift on his toes, the raciest of the sled dogs. This is the Siberian Husky. Medium sized, quick, light on his feet, and he should be a balance of power, speed, and of course the necessary endurance to haul people and goods, mostly furs, around over the ice. He's got a fox like head almond eyes, those ears closer set than some of the other sled, do sled dogs. And this is the breed bred for speed. And it was when you go to the uh, trials and competitions, it's the Siberian Huskies which win all those competitions. They're so fast, so agile. 
and lovely to see that they are still so enthusiastically used as working dogs by the people who, who, who breed them still today. I saw a team of these in Finland sleeping out in Arctic conditions, a remarkable sight, but so hardy, fit for function. We don't, we don't have much snow here, but it doesn't stop them. That's a very impressive head of the Tibetan Mastiff. And it's thought that the Tibetan Mastiff, a very ancient breed, going back to early Tibetan times, was the forefather of all the Mastiff breeds. The Mastiffs are strong, well-boned, they're good guard dogs. This one, the Tibetan Mastiff, has this crest of hair over its neck and shoulders. It's so exciting when we see one of the less common breeds in, in a group like this being represented by such a beautiful example. This one's come from Russia to compete and really is impressive. And this one recently was a best in show winner on the continent. It's rare for this breed to get to those heights, but this is a wonderful, outstanding specimen. This. So we've seen all of our best of breeds. Now, who is Meg Purnell Carpenter going to choose to win the penultimate group at Crufts 2017? So she's striding towards the head of the line there with great purpose. And she's bringing in the Bernese. Bernese Mountain Dog in first. She's wasting no time in getting her shortlist. The Doberman comes forward. The Giant Schnauzer. Down towards. And next it's that lovely Leon Berger comes forward. The Newfoundland and the Portuguese water dog and the Rottweiler this, uh, and the Russian black terrier now and the Russian black terrier comes in so there's the lineup of eight for Meg Pennell Carpenter super there's the Leonberger the Newfoundland the Portuguese water dog the Rottweiler and the Russian Black Terrier at the end of the line there. Now she's just taking her time to look down the line, taking their outlines and balance a long look at that Leon Berger. I think we're going to see them move now. She's going to send them. So first off, the Bernese Mountain Dog, champion Meadow Park Just a Dream, Ruby. She has won a, a group before, and uh, so she's in very good hands, a very skillful handler. Now it's the turn of the Doberman. The Doberman. Champion and Irish champion, Joe Jovic, Midnight Express, Billy. Still full of beans. And there the crisp outline of the giant schnauzer. Ferncliff pistols at dawn for Rough House. Just two years old, still a youngster. Slow maturing these big breeds. That glorious Leonberger. Amicus Optimus Vitalis. <laughs> From St. Petersburg, Prussia. But what a gorgeous dog, Frank. Absolutely. His substance with his athleticism. And here's another one where the same descriptions could apply. The rolling gait, which comes from those large ribs under that coat. Strongly boned with webbed feet to help equip him to work in water. And this is a multi-champion high seas Dr. Romeo called Macduff. Again, another water dog. Perfectly carried tail over the loin of the dog. Come from Canada to compete today. Now. Champion Fantasa Smirnoff Ice, Yasmin. And, and the sire of this uh, Rottweiler bitch won the group at Crufts 
under myself a few years ago and he's let's wonder if she will follow in his footsteps and the impressive russian black terrier from budapest in hungary Ilya, just 23 months old not even two years old <laughs> and also full of beans what an impressive lineup yes, for our she's, working yes, she's group. got plenty to choose from and she's going to Meg is going to send them round the ring to look at their profile movement, their reach in front and their drive behind. Also looking at the top line. The top line is often an indicator that the dog is well balanced and well constructed. What is it they say? If it's made right, it moves right. And that's why judges move dogs so frequently because you can hide things when you're, when you're standing a dog carefully. If you're a good handler, you can't hide it on the move. So the boards are out, and we're about to have our working group winner, the penultimate group for 2017. And the Newfoundland takes the group champion, Mary Bear D'Artagnan, Bentley, three and a half years old, Paddy Galvin handling in the ring tonight. And six, second place is going to the Leonberger from Russia. Marvellous. Third place to the Doberman. Billy, champion and Irish champion, Georgievic Midnight Express. It's the Portuguese water dog takes fourth place. So a very nice lineup. But there we have it. We have the winner of the working group for Crufts 2017, the Newfoundland champion, Mary Bear D'Artagnan. Come here, Paddy. I hope you're <laughs> now, many congratulations. Turn around here for me. Sorry. That's it, so everyone can see you. Paddy, you have had some many career highlights in dogs. You've been in dogs for years and years and years. How does that feel to be working group winner at Cruff? Magnificent. Magnificent. Did you wake up this morning and think you had a good chance? Hmm. <laughs> oh, really? No, I, I'd hoped he'd perform very well in the, in the breed, and he did, so, and he performed here well, so. I, can't ask more from you certainly can't yeah. you don't actually have much time now to get ready for best in show you've got to come back into that big ring is there any some any final grooming preparations that you'll do between now and then no he's, he's groomed to the hilt he's been had two days of bathing and grooming continuously so it's in good nick at the moment so yeah well we are thrilled for you aren't we everyone put your hands together for the winner of the working group here at crufts 2017 the newfoundland